For those of you who are only interested in how much money did I make, the grand total is... Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. Nice to see you again. Today we have a massive fish shipment. Massive for me, anyway. As you might know, I've been doing live plants recently on the website, so we've got some new plant stock in, but I also ordered some fish this time. Some for me and some to take to a local auction, which you might see later in the video. But let's get right in and have a look at some of the fish we got. It's a fancy poly box, if I do say so. Right. So, first off, everything looks nice and dry, not too cold. Uh, I'm just going to float these bags for a while. We've got 25 Daniel Rerio Longfin. I'll chop in some of the footage of these fish when I put them into the tanks that are going in. Next up, we've got 25 Cooley Loaches. Decent size and mix of colours. Um, and then, again, 25, this is the one that I wanted for myself, I'm going to start a little breeding project. Um, Celestial Pearl Danios, or Danio Margaritas. The pizza Danio. Very small, but I did order small ones. So far, so good. Something a little bit larger now, we've got the Exodons, we've got the Bucktooth Tetras. I already have some Bucktooth Tetras, so this is to Get a few more in there because I think I need a slightly larger number for them to do well. Oh, these are the Lamprologus ocellatus, little shell dwellers. Um, nine in there. I ordered a lot more than nine, but they're a decent size. Let's see how they look. One of them does not look too good, two of them do not look too good. Three of them do not look too good. Let's get them in and up to a temperature as fast as we can, get them out of that bag. And then finally, oh, these are a decent size, some Cardinal Tetras. 25 of them, coloured up decently in the bag as well, so they're not too bad. And that is it. So the larger part of the order is the plants. The plants have been selling like hotcakes, and I'm really pleased with the feedback that I'm getting from people saying, they're arriving in good condition. Thank you to anyone who's left me feedback on the packaging, how we're doing that. Um, so we've restocked everything. So by the time you see this video, the website, sh the website, by the time you see this video, the website should be updated um, with the new stock list, but we're going to do something a little bit different. So copying no jacks, um, this was an idea given to me by JT Keeping Fish. Go and check him out if you haven't already. Um, where I've kept my plants before submerged, because they were the plants I wanted to use in my aquascapes and then sell off a few extra, these new ones I'm going to keep immersed. So I'm going to keep them in a couple of spare tanks that I've set up down here. So it's basically a good way to reuse some old broken tanks. So as you can see, this one's a split, that one's got a split. I've repaired them in the past and they do hold water, but perfect for this. So what you do, just fill it up with a couple of centimetres of water at the bottom, make sure you've got a lid on the top, and then every day come in and give it a bit of a misting. And the theory is they should last a lot longer. Um, so we'll give that a go. Um, but yeah, thanks Jack for the idea. So we have a couple of new varieties. We've got Anubias Nana Gold. So a couple of these. I've got little flowers on. You can see starting to come through. Bonus. We've got a new... Java firm, so this is the the narrow leaf version. And again, if you look at this bit here, for instance, that's lots of little baby plants. So on that one leaf, there's probably an extra six, seven, eight plants in there. So if you ever see that, that's how Java ferns make new babies. These little black bits. We've got all the fish and plants unpacked. Plants, absolutely fine. Loads of them, really good quality. And um, we'll get the website updated soon. Fish, cardinal tetras are huge and look fantastic. I was thinking of getting a load of these for the discus tank, but I wanted to take some to the auction as well that's happening this weekend. So not sure about them, um, whether to keep them or take them to the auction. I think I'm going to take them to the auction. Um, and just remember for next time that they come in at such a good size. These are Longfin Zebra Daniels. I want to have a bit of a 
another play with my Zebra Daniel breeding project. I've been doing some 3D printed stuff to see whether I can get some automatic egg catchers and things like that. So I want to get a good group of them. And again, they're a decent size, the long fin variety. I don't need this many of them. So some of these will be coming to the auction with me. Unfortunately, some of the shellies didn't make it. So I said some of them looked bad in the bag. And um, by the time I opened the bag, there was four or five of them were dead on arrival. Um, so there was two bags, one bag, obviously something went wrong in one bag. Um, and we've ended up losing everything from that bag. So I think that's seven or eight in total that I've lost. Um, which still leaves me enough for a decent size group for a breeding project. So hopefully, fingers crossed, things will be okay there. Um, it's gutted because they were the ones I really wanted. I've been wanting shellies for ages. I've been planning this tank for ages. Um, I've been working on raising the water hardness and getting the pH up a little bit with some crushed coral and thinking about the layout and the scape of how I wanted it to be. And then they're the ones that have the problem, obviously. Not great, but I would mean I'll get credit refunded for the fish and all that, but still, it's not nice when fish die. But thankfully, all the other fish, so the coolie loaches, the CPDs, the bucktooth tetras, all doing absolutely fine. Again, a lot of them are to bolster existing stock that I've already got, potential breeding projects in the future, and hoping to take some of them to the auction to offer some of the folk that turn up to the auction. Anyway, just monitor these for the time being, make sure they're healthy. We've got a few days before the auction comes along so I can make sure that we've not got any cases of sickness or weak fish or anything like that, make sure I'm taking good fish to the auction and see how we get on. Right, it's ridiculous o'clock on Sunday morning, auction morning. I was up until 1am last night packing boxes of plants, so all the plants are packed in here. And this morning I need to do fish, so I wanted to make sure that the fish spend as little as possible time in bags. Because they were only transported to me, what, a week ago. Um, they've been doing their quarantine in my tanks here, everything's fine and I want to make sure that they spend just today in bags. So it's a local auction, it's a Sheffield auction. Most people will be from the area, they'll be buying their fish, taking them home and getting them in that day. So they should be in the bags for no more than a few hours today. But I have to leave here about 10.30 and I'm rubbish at catching fish, so this might take a while. So good luck. I haven't shot much of this because I'm running a bit behind time, but catching fish is not my favorite thing. So, lessons learned so far, bucktooth tetras, impossible to catch. Cardinal tetras, practically swim into the bag. Um, I'm also realizing I'm starting to feel a little bit bad because I've got duckweed in most of these tanks. So whoever wins these fish is winning some duckweed. So, sorry, um, call it a little freebie. So I'm kind of trying to catch some zebra daniels now. These are gonna go five to a bag. if I can get them in. And then we're sorted. the bag completely. They jump like crazy except well they're on the precipice of falling into the safety of the bag and then they just sit motionless. So one of the rules of the, back, the auction is that you have a third water, two thirds air. And these bags, I don't really like them. I like the fact that they're rounded at the bottom, that's nice, but they don't give me enough. I would normally squeeze them down, tie a knot in them. But I can't, I can't meet that rule, so I'm going for the heat sealing method, which I've done before when I've shipped fish in the past, um, which is generally fine, but hopefully this doesn't cause me any problems. I like to give it two blasts on the heat sealer. Which kind of gives me a backup that if one fails, the other one should hold. Next bag.
from the auction. Um, it was a long day. Lots of people there, really, really busy at the start. Like I say, fell off a little bit towards the end. Um, and we got to meet a few people, so you might recognise some of these people in this picture. We had uh, Mal from uh, Aquarium Delirium and Andrew from Aquarium Daily came down with a few other regulars. Hello, Juggler, Brian. Um, yeah, so it was a good meet-up. It was as awkward as ever that every time I moved around, someone would come up and say hello, and I had no idea who they were, and then obviously they saw my YouTube video. I don't think I'll ever get used to people coming up and just starting a conversation with me where I might have even replied to one of their comments or something on a video and then they pick up the conversation with me and I'm like, I don't know what you're talking, who are, what? So lovely to meet all these people. Uh, I just, oh, it's weird. Um, so, but if you do see me out there and you recognise me, by all means come up and say hello. It was nice to meet everybody. And what you're really here for is it was an auction. So we got some stuff. So... What did I get? I think I got a few decent bargains. I got a pond lily for my pond. Surprise, surprise. A pink pond lily. I think it was £3.50 I paid for that. Quite happy with that. That looks quite good. I did pick up a really good size black ghost knife fish. Um, you might remember from my last video I picked up one but it died almost instantly. So hopefully this one being a bit bigger will last a bit longer and do quite well. Um, we've got things like microworm cultures. I got some different types of shrimp. So we've got some yellow shrimp. Don't know what they are. I have a kind of mixed shrimp tank where all of them in there are yellowy, orangey, goldy. So I'm kind of cultivating my own special yellowish line. Uh, again, some more baby albino uh, ancestress. Well, there's more than I thought in there, actually. It's about five or so. Again, like some more random shrimp. Uh, a couple of more bristle noses. I always seem to buy bristle noses. I don't really know why. Um, and also, I always seem to buy LT Grey Endlers. So I've got some more of them. I do have a few of them already, so that will hopefully uh, diversify the genetics a little bit. And some yellow cherry shrimp. So again, yellows, oranges, all that kind of stuff. And finished it off with a few lots of um, blackworms, so live blackworms. These I think are great because you can put them into a tank and they'll just all disappear and burrow into the substrate and maybe feed your tank for a week or so. Or keep them in the fridge and they last for quite a while. So that's it, I was concentrating mostly on selling rather than buying. I've brought back all my bucktooth tetras, none of them sold. I don't think I sold any of the long fin zebra danios and there might be a few other fish so I need to get them all back in and then we'll be back to the square one and then we'll see, tot it all up and see how I did. So I've just put back all the fish that I had to bring back and I've got gone wrong somewhere. So the only fish that came back were two bags of zebra danios. I only took two bags, they weren't selling so not good. I didn't think I sold the buck to tetras but clearly I did because there's none there so someone must have taken them all and I missed it. All the cardinal tetras were gone, all the celestial pearl daniels were gone. Some of the coolie loaches, I took five bags of coolie loaches with two per bag. Um, one, two, three, four, oh, I only sold one of those bags of coolie loaches for two pound. I thought that was a bargain. And then I took six bags of goldfish with three in each and two came back. So all in all, not too bad. For those of you who are only interested in how much money did I make, the grand total was something like £256 um, out of all the plants and all the fish that I took. Uh, kind of break even cost. So, no great win, no great loss. I had a day out. What more can you say? So, what were my final thoughts about the auction? Was it worth it? Did I make any money? Did I have fun? These are all the important questions. So, I would say that. Your local fish club, if they're putting on auctions, it's definitely worth going to support them. Um, fish clubs are where you can get bargains, you can get information, you can meet like-minded people, you can not feel like a complete weirdo for being into fish and fish tanks and that kind of thing. So definitely go and support your local fish club. Even if you're not after the, the information side of things or the club side of things, the auctions can present bargains. Can be in the operative word because there can be rubbish there, tat. Um, we were joking that we had the, 
the tat lots that came along where it was the used gravel and things that like plastic plants and you're like, oh, turning your nose up a little bit. It is what it is. My experience, it was a lot more work than I thought it was going to be. So the preparing to sell at an auction, the bagging of plants, the bagging of fish took way more time than I anticipated. So I think I was up till kind of one o'clock in the morning the night before and up at seven o'clock in the morning the day of bagging things up and getting them ready and even then I was cutting it fine so it was a close call for me. Lots of time and effort went into that and then when things don't sell you're a bit like oh the amount of time I spent doing that it is what it is. Um, in this particular case it was good because I got to meet a few people that we chat to regularly on my Friday night live streams and things like that. Uh, I had a few people come up to me randomly and say hello I watch your videos. Always very strange because Obviously, they know what I look like because I do this kind of thing, but I don't know what they look like. And you're like, oh yeah, I commented on your video three years ago and you still haven't replied. I'm like, oh God, I feel terribly sorry. <laughs> um, but it's always nice to meet people who watch the videos and have a bit of a chat. So that, from that point of view, that might be unique to me, but that was quite interesting, nice. Um, my general thoughts on the auction, for me, the... The approach I took was to go in and put reserve prices on everything that I had paid money for. So if it wasn't a fish I'd bred myself, if it was one I'd bought in, or if it was the plants that I'd bought in, I put the reserve price kind of close to the cost price. So as if that didn't work out, I wasn't going to lose the, lose the farm, so to speak. And yeah, it was a little bit disappointing from there. So I didn't, didn't lose much, but I didn't make much either. Um, at the end of the day, I think I got £256 and if I count up the cost value, the, all those things, the wholesale value of that, it was about £220. So I made a little bit of money. Would that 30 quid be worth it to spend seven hours, eight hours? Um, no, it wouldn't. But like I say, there were other things driving me to the auction. It was to hang out with some friends, to see what was going on, how got some bargains myself, all that kind of good stuff. And I'm kind of happy that a few other people out there got some bargains as well and I provided said bargains. So while it would be nice to make a load of money, I didn't, it's fine. My feedback on the auction, if I was to give some general critiques, I say this with a pinch of salt because I don't, I don't have a better idea. I don't have a better way of doing these things. There they are problems that I don't know how to fix. So I, I feel bad complaining about them, but I just wanted to give you an idea of what the experience is like. Number one, it's very slow. So. The auction opened to the public, I think, around 11 and started at 12. It didn't finish till after 6. That's a long time in anyone's book. Um, how much could you quicken that up? I'm not sure how much you could quicken that up. It's not like they were really slow at running through the lots. There was lots of people helping this time, so there was lots of more staff runners doing all the jobs this time, so that went a bit better. They had changed the way the, the bedding worked, so in the Previously, if you had, I don't know, six bags of Java Moss, they'd sell one, the person who won would say, I'll have that bag for four pounds, and they only want one bag, they offer it to the next person at their bid, which might be 350, and then the next person at 250, etc. This time it was just, whatever the first one goes for, that's what the rest of them go for. Worked quite well. Um, I think it could be gamed, and uh, there were certainly a few murmurings of people who were thinking, well, don't bid on that, we'll just get it all for the cheap price. But in general, it looked like it worked well. Certainly seemed to speed up the admin side of things because you didn't have to write down six prices. So that, that kind of worked out okay. Um, the auctioneering was again a little bit slow. There was a lot of, um, I mean, there was some funny chat as well. So the, the six, one, half dozen, the other. There was some, some fun quips and stuff like, at one point they described archer fish as, these are the fish that spit fish out of trees. And you're a bit like, what? And then they would say things like, oh, this is an angel fish. And then the next one that came around said, this is an angel fish, but a bit bigger than the last one. But they didn't tell you how big the last one was. So and it was just like, what? What's going on? I don't, I don't know. Uh, but for speed wise, there was a lot of describing the fish beforehand where they'd be like, this is a lovely fish. It's a great fish. It's a brilliant fish. These are great. These are 10 pounds in the shop. These are, oh, they'll, and they'd go on before they would actually start the bidding. Whereas I I felt like if they just got into it a bit quicker, it would have all run a little bit faster. 
Um, it's quite hard to see, so in the auctions that I've seen in the past they've had a camera and a laptop and a projector and all that, so you could put the, the bag of fish in front of the laptop and everyone could see it, otherwise they'd, the other option is they all go down to the front and everyone has a gander. Again, it takes a little bit of time. But again, I don't know how much better you can make that. It kind of is what it is. Um, maybe there was too many lots, but how, how do you say no, you're not allowed a lot? Maybe they make it a members only thing. I don't know. Um, so possibly looking at getting the camera setup thing back up and working again, that might be speeding things up again and just like getting a bit slicker with the auctioneering. But again, these are very minor issues. My issues, um, there's a couple of mistakes, but I think you kind of take your chance when you do that kind of thing. They had used the wrong reserve price on a couple of my plants. Didn't lose out too much on that. Um, they, they actually missed an entire bag of plants. Um, so I just got all of them back, so it's not like I lost anything, I just didn't get the chance to, to sell them. There was a couple of times in my lot where, and I feel this is because it took so long to get there. Bear in mind, I was lot C, so I think the lots went from number one to 100 and then started ABC, maybe not 100, but it was a good three hours before they got to my first lot. So by the time they got around to my plants, it was kind of flagging at the end of the day, and that's when maybe a lot of people had already left by that point, the people that were remaining were either the hardcore or the people who were selling stuff themselves so there was a little bit of a limited audience by the time they got round to my second box of my lot and maybe it was just a desire to get finished but they stopped auctioning so when they would say like oh a bag of java moss and I had three of them somebody would go three pounds and then another house would go up and go okay three pounds for you and three pounds for you and I was like ah, no that should be three pounds three pound fifty and but no so they just kind of randomly stopped auctioning and just offered all my lots at the same price. Which I was a little bit, oh, why have they done that? But I was also a bit like, I want to go home, I've been here for hours. So I kind of take it that. There was a few misread labels and things like that I noticed from a few different lots. Like they sold a couple of my lots as cryptocorians and I took four or five different types of cryptocorians. Some of them are a little bit rarer than the others. So I was a bit, mm. But again, you kind of take your chances with auctions that that's what's going to happen, so I kind of knew that. Like I say, at the end of the day, I got to meet up with a few friends. Uh, it was a nice day out. I got some bargains. I got some nice fish, as you saw. I sold some fish and provided some bargains. Can't say fairer than that. I would say, if I sound negative, I don't mean to, because, like I say, I don't have a better idea. Um, and if you have a local fish club, it's probably worth joining. We'll leave it at that and say thank you very much for watching so far. If you want to discuss this further, come and join me on a Friday night live stream. We'll have a bit of a chit chat, we do quizzes and stuff. Otherwise, go and watch one of my other videos and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!